This is Physics Chapter 4. Mass, Weight, Inertia and Density. Lesson 5. Density. Now in this video, we will try to answer questions like this. Have you ever wondered why a test tube containing a certain volume of mercury feels much heavier than a test tube containing an equal volume of water? Right? The answer to this question lies in this concept known as density. So let's have a look. Density. Density is defined as mass per unit volume of a substance. Okay, It has a symbol rho and the SI unit for density is the kilogram per meter cube. Other common uh, units used for density is the gram per cm cube. Right? So um, do take note that uh, 1000 kilogram per meter cube is actually equal to 1 gram per cm cube. Okay, so for example, if we have oil which has a density of 750 kg per meter cube and we would like to express its density in gram per cm cube, we simply have to just take 750 and divide that by a thousand and that will give us a value of 0 0.75 gram per cm cube. So the density of oil can equally be expressed in the unit kilogram per meter cube or gram per cm cube by a simple conversion of this 1000 kilogram per meter cube is equals to 1 gram per cm cube. Right, to calculate density, we have to use this formula. Density is simply uh, given by the mass of the substance and divided by the volume of that particular substance. And instead of writing in long words like this, we, usu we usually would like to represent the formula by the symbols itself. Rho is equals to M divided by capital V. Okay, now for some of you, um, you might actually want to use this triangle method to represent the formula, where D over here is to used uh, is used to represent density, M for mass and V for volume. Uh, a way to memorize or remember this uh, relationship between density, mass, and volume is to remember this mnemonics, my darling Valentine. Okay, my darling Valentine over here. Well, personally, I'm not a fan of uh, the triangle method, but if, let's say, some of you actually find that this is useful for you to remember the formula and how you can actually manipulate the different variables together, um, do go ahead and use it. I would uh, suggest and encourage you to actually work the formula in terms of the algebraic uh, form. Okay, So, let's have a look at a simple uh, work example over here. Right? How do we then calculate the density of a copper cube that has a mass of 14 kilogram and a volume of 0 0.002 meter cube. So just uh, writing down the formula over here, we proceed by uh, putting the right numbers into the right places. So mass is 14 kilogram and followed by the volume 0 0.02. And using a calculator, we have this answer, 7,000 kilogram per meter cube. Now, let me ask you this question. If I want to express the density of copper in gram per cm cube, how would that be? What would that value be? So if you recall that 1000 kilogram per meter cube is equal to 1 gram per cm cube, just divide the 7000 by 1000 and that will give us 7 grams per cm cube. Now let's understand density a little bit more. The key word here is actually pack. How pack something is. You can always think of density as how pack an object is. Okay, now let's look at this diagram, the density of matter. Okay, for example, when we compare between a gas, liquid, and solid, okay, let's say we have three substances that exist as a solid, liquid, and gas, and this substance itself are uh, contained in the similar size uh, space. Well, for a solid itself, we will realize that hey, there's a lot more matter packed into this volume compared to liquid and gas. So therefore, since there are a lot more matter packed into this space, this same space, we will say that a solid has more density than liquid or gas. Now, comparing between a liquid and a gas, we find that the number of matter packed into a liquid is a, a little bit more than that of a gas. And therefore, we will say that a liquid will be more or liquid is more dense compared to a gas. Okay, so remember this, density is linked to this word pack, how pack something is. Now let's um, further 
understand what density is, okay? So let's compare the masses of uh, three different substances of equal volumes, okay? So when you look at this object, the shape of this object, they are all the same volume. However, they contain different amount of matter so, or mass in this, in this case. So for the foam itself, the amount of matter that makes up this space or fill this space could be just 0 0.03 grams. Wood could be 0 0.7 grams and lead is 11.35 grams. So which of this is denser? Well, we can see that since uh, for lead itself, it has 11.35 grams of matter packed into the same space, we can therefore conclude that lead has a higher density compared to wood and foam. Between wood and foam, wood has uh, a mass that is more than foam. So therefore, this uh, tells us that wood has a denser, uh, density that is larger than that of foam. Okay. Real life example. Okay. Now, how do we apply density in a real life example? Let's look at this uh, holiday in Bangkok. Imagine yourself, you're having a holiday in Bangkok. Okay. Fantastic place for visiting, for eating, for food, and also for shopping. Right. So, well, let's ha have a look. When you're arriving in Bangkok, you, you are there with this uh, luggage and well for most people when you're traveling to Bangkok the luggage bag is pretty much empty okay except for some bits and pieces of essentials and when you're departing well let's imagine what's going to happen to the mass of this luggage bag well probably when you're arriving the whole mass of this bag is 5 kilogram but when you're departing it could have just increased to 25 kilogram right so which is denser before or after well, in the sense uh, the amount of space or volume of this luggage is the same, but now when you're departing with a lot more mass packed into this luggage, well, this will mean that this luggage is now more dense compared to the one before you spend your holidays in Bangkok. So, in other words, when we compare masses of equal volumes of different substances, we are actually comparing densities. Okay, have a look at uh, this table that uh, gives us an idea of the density of different substances. Okay, now let's take note of a very special property of density. Okay, now density of a substance will always remain the same. What do I mean by that? Let's have a look at this diagram over here. Okay, let's say this is a bucket of water and some of the water has been splashed. Okay. Right, so what is the density of this droplet of water as compared to this larger droplet of water and to this other body of water here or even here in the bucket of water? Well, as long as the substance remains the same, water, water, water and water, the density of water itself is the same regardless of whether it is a large drop of water, or a small drop of water or that of a bucket of water. Then uh, let's have a look at this diagram on the right hand side. These are all gold, okay, made of gold. You see gold coins, small and large, and there is, there is also a gold bar here and here. Well, what would be the density of this large piece of gold bar compared to this small gold coin? As long as the substance is the same, which is gold for this case, the density of this gold bar and that of the small gold coin will always remain the same. Okay, will still be the same. Some may ask, what happens if I were to break this gold bar into half? What would be the density of this gold bar then? Well, as long as the substance remains the same, the density of this half of the gold bar and the other half of the gold bar will still remain the same value. So that's what we mean by density of the same substance remain the same. Another property of density is that it actually affects floating or sinking. Now let's look at this table over here, right? It consists of the densities of four substances, mercury, water, polystyrene, and pine wood. Well, which of these will actually float in water? Well, the answer is polystyrene and pine wood. How do we know that? Well, it's very simple. If the density of the material is lesser than that of water, they will float. And if the density of the material is more than that of water, it will actually sink okay right so the conclusion is simply this 
The density of a substance determines whether it will sink or float in different liquids or gases. Object that is denser than liquid will sink, and the object that is less dense than liquid will float. So at this point, uh, let's have a look at this table. This table actually compares four properties of an object. Its mass, inertia, density, and whether it will float or sink when placed in water. Okay, so the two objects that we are comparing here is one kilogram of feathers and one kilogram of lead. Lead is a type of metal. Okay, well, when we compare the mass, both of them are one kilogram and therefore they have the same mass. So how about inertia? Well, recall that inertia depends on mass. Since the mass remains the same, the inertia of both feather and lead will be the same. Okay, how about density? Well, you know that for one kilogram of feathers, this feather itself, which has a lower dense, um, it this same mass of feather will actually um, occupy a lot more space compared to one kilogram of lead. So if there's a case, the density of feather will be less than that of lead. So if you to place both of these objects into uh, water, obviously feathers will float since the density is less than that of water, while lead will sink. So let's um, have a look at this example. If I have a type of wood that has a density of 0.65 gram per cm cube and it has a mass of 500 gram, what would be its volume? So how do we present our answer here? Well, let's start by writing down the formula for density. Rho equals to M divided by capital V. Re substituting the values into the equation itself, we get 0 0.65 over here on the left hand side and equate that to 500 gram divided by volume. Rearranging this by algebraic formula, uh, we will get volume is simply equals to 500 divided by 0 0.65 and that will give us 769.2 centimeter cube. Okay, so with that, we pretty much have come to the end of this chapter. So allow me just to quickly summarize the relationship between mass, density, and weight of a substance. Okay, now mass is the amount of matter in a body. All right, and this mass itself affects the density of a material or a substance. Okay, how is how is that so? Well, remember that density. Another word for density is simply how packed something is. So this simply means that how much mass is present in a certain volume. The more mass there are in a certain fixed volume, the denser that material is. The less mass there is, then that material will be considered as something that is of lower density. Okay, uh, And remember that for density of a substance, whether is it uh, the substance is large or small, as long as the substance is the same, the density will remain the same. Okay, How about weight? Well, we have found that the weight of an object is not the same as mass. That is important to take note of. Okay, The weight of an object is dependent on two, on two things. First, its mass or the amount of matter in that object. And it is also dependent on the gravitational field strength on which the object is present in. Okay, So, to find the weight, we simply take the, its mass and multiply by the gravitational field strength of that particular location. Okay, so that's it. Thank you so much for listening.